The week starts with a limited risk appetite as the fear of higher for longer Fed rates, the broadening auto strikes in Detroit and an eventual US government shutdown actually prevent investors from walking light-heartedly into the new week of trading. Now investors will be keeping their focus on the inflation data around the world and also the latest US GDP update to see whether the latest numbers actually continue defying gravity in the US growth or not. So welcome, this is Swiss Codes Daily Market Talk. So the week started on a cautious note as stocks in Asia mostly sold off following a rough week in the US, remember, where the Federal Reserve's hawkish interest rate pose triggered a fresh wave of worries that the interest rate would stay higher for longer in the US. As such, the US two-year yield bounced lower after hitting 5.20% last week, yet the US 10-year yield continues journey higher and hit the 4.5% on Friday's trading session. The S&P 500 was thrown under a bus as well because the index slipped below its ascending base building since last October, fell below its 100-day moving average and closed the week at the lowest level since June, having actually recorded the worst performance over a week since the banking crisis that we experienced in March this year. The Bank of America said that equity investors are now dumping stocks at the fastest level since last December, and Morgan Stanley came also to warn that stocks are now fragile. And indeed, they are, and more fragile than the S&P 500 stocks are the interest rate sensitive technology stocks and also the small cap stocks because the growing divergence between the S&P 500 stocks and the small Russell 2000 stocks is also flashing recession on top of the heavily inverted US yield curve. And unfortunately, we don't have much on the menu to sweeten up things. The UAW strikes will broaden from today to all GM and Celantis parts plants in the US, which actually means that 5,600 more workers will be joining the movement this week. Ford, on the other hand, will likely be spared from the latest broadening of the strikes, at least for now, as some good progress is apparently made on negotiations between the UAW and Ford, although, although it is said that there are still significant gaps between what the UAW workers ask and what the company can actually offer. I mean, remember, they were actually asking for a 40% pay rise and 32-hour work weeks. So they both are very, very hard to swallow for any company and even more companies in the US. And even though Sean Fein, who is at the helm of this uh, UAW movement, gains this battle, the impact of the walkout that we see these days and the financial damage that comes with it will push these companies, the auto companies, to invest in automation to reduce costs and to decrease the risk of another such event happening in the future. But for now, well, these automakers don't really have a choice. I mean, I don't know what they have as a choice. We will see what happens. But, but in Hollywood, writers and studios have finally reached a tentative deal apparently which could finally finally cool down tensions between writers and the studios after weeks of struggle but now overall if you're looking at the big picture the strikes are obviously not good for the economic activity and they will certainly weigh on growth numbers and that's especially true if uh, the ones the strikes that we see in detroit prolong but if bank failures of march didn't derail the US economy from a growing path, well, I don't really see why the car maker strikes would be worse than what we lived in March. So the latest US GDP update is due this week in this environment of chaos, and the expectation is still a positive revision to the US growth from 2.1% to 2.3%. Anyway, this week, investors will watch these progress on the trade car makers and the strikes, the US GDP update, the PC inflation numbers, which are, remember, the Federal Reserve's favorite inflation gouge, and they will also keep an eye on the US politics. 
obviously, as the end of September deadline to another possible US government shutdown will remain seated big on the headlines as we move toward the end of this month. Now, no progress has been made on a dozen of bills that the US politicians should agree on to avert the shut down the government shut down this month now it's also said that donald trump who is republicans front runner in next presidential election in the u.s and who has been obviously understandably lobbying for this shutdown to happen because it would halt the federal offense prosecutions against him at least for a while will complicate things the letter could obviously keep the selling pressure on the u.s government bonds and further support the yields positive trends and that would obviously weigh on sentiment across the broader risk assets in the US and around the world and in case you missed well the US national debt hit 33 trillion US dollars last week so to give you a comparison the US debt is now equal to the combined value of the Chinese Japanese German Indian and British economy. So it's huge. But does it really matter? Well, I seriously don't think so because the US debt is still, with all this, it is still considered as being the lowest risk investment on the face of this earth. So this is an anomaly. Yes, it is, but it is not just another government shutdown in the US that will change things, right? So just don't stress too much about it. In the currency market as well, the US dollar index actually is extending gains. Remember, the index had entered the bullish consolidation zone after the Fed kept the possibility of another interest rate hike before the year ends on the table when it met last week. And uh, the US policymakers also said that the interest rates in the US will likely stay higher for a longer period of time next year. The other central banks on the other hand, didn't sound as hawkish as the Federal Reserve did. The Swiss National Bank, for example, and the Bank of England both unexpectedly kept interest rates unchanged last week. The Bank of Japan, on the other hand, defied all expectations of any hawkishness or a hawkish shift in its own policy and maintained both the interest rates and its dovish monetary policy stance well in place. So the dollar yen remains under a decent, decent positive pressure, but shorting the yen at the current levels doesn't feel comfortable as Japan could at any time just intervene in the FX markets to stop bleeding in the Japanese yen, which would then spoil a trade that would otherwise only but only make sense. Elsewhere, the euro dollar actually tested an important Fibonacci support to the downside last week. So that support was the major 38.2% Fibonacci retracement level, which should distinguish between the positive trend that's been building since last year and a slide into the bearish consolidation zone moving forward. Now, personally, I believe that there is a stronger case building right now for a further euro weakness against the US dollar than the contrary, because released last Friday, while well, the preliminary September PMI figures in the eurozone were quite mixed. The eurozone's manufacturing PMI actually showed that the economy further slowed in the month of September, but German numbers hinted at some improvement, if it's any good news to anyone. So this week, we will see how the the recent slowdown that we see in the euro area activity impacted the inflation dynamics in September. Headline inflation in the euro area is expected to have slowed from 5.2% to 4.5%. 5% this month, a slowdown that would definitely, definitely defy the rising energy prices of lately and the euro's depreciation against the US dollar. Core inflation, on the other hand, is seen softening from 5.3% to 4.8%. Now, any softness in the eurozone's inflation figures should actually give further support to the euro bears, while higher than expected inflation numbers this week from the eurozone which i believe could be the surprise of this week by the way well they could actually revive the european central bank hawks but they will hardly prevent the euro from sinking into a deeper deeper depression as further european central bank action would also mean a bigger hit on the eurozone economies and that's obviously a fear that will likely keep the euro bulls away from the market at least 
for the moment. On the corporate calendar where Micron Technology and Nike will be releasing their latest quarterly results this week and Total Energy's Investor Day event will actually gather happy, happy industry players as the US crude consolidates gains about the $91 per barrel level this morning with no big sign of a significant downside correction for the moment. So this is all for today. I'm Ipegos Kardeshke and thank you for joining me and thank you for all your beautiful and supportive messages. I hope this episode of Market Talk has been helpful and it has been insightful to you. So please do not hesitate to leave your comments, your reactions and your questions below as usual. And follow us on Instagram, on X and on LinkedIn for regular market updates. And subscribe of course to our YouTube channel for daily market comments. I will meet you again tomorrow and until then, good day trading. Thank you.